نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احل العقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر من احلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا علما نافیا رزقا طیبا و عملا متقبلا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ O you who have believed do not take the disbelievers as what? Awliya, wala, wali, allies, instead of believers. Do you wish to give Allah against yourself a clear case? Now, what against a believer would be a clear case to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is that when that person makes friends, makes wala, makes allies, makes a wali with the non-believers. Now here in this verse 144, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching all of us about our social, human social dealings. That is with whom, how, what, where, can we or should we relate, behave and interact as. To comprehend all these human social dealings, we need to understand that basic human dealings are of four basic types. The first, I will be moving from the most, the dealing which is not intimate towards the dealing which is the most intimate. So the first dealing is, or the first type of human relationship or the first type of human social dealing is a simple interaction. The relationship or dealing of simple interactions like in our day-to-day -day lives, we come across so many people around us, you know, whom with we interact and we deal like we're going to the market. We are dealing with the green grocer, with the person who's selling fruit. We are going to pick our child from the school and we relate with the mother of another child we have nothing in common with them no sharing no acquaintance and we might not even come across the person again in our life so this is the first form of relationship or dealing is this is simple and a light relationship the second form of relationship or dealing is the dealing of hospitality that is when a person comes to our place we out of sheer politeness and courtesy we extend our hospitality so this is the second form of relationship which is obviously more intimate as compared to the first form the third form of dealing or relationship is a dealing of care of help or support for example, we find somebody needy, in need of help and support, and we extend our help and our support. We see a person who is crying and we wipe off the tears and we console and we comfort. We find out that a person is sick and we pay a visit. This is what? This is the third category of relationships or dealings in which we are caring and helping and supporting the next person. This is more intimate and more personalized as compared to the first two. Now, the fourth form of dealing. This is the most intimate relationship. This is the most loving of all the relationships. The dealing of love and the dealing of intimacy. The relationship of, the relationship of being loved and the relationship of being intimate. This is what is called as wala. The concept of wala in Islam, the person is known as a wali. What is the relationship of wala? 
and how do we relate with the wali is some characteristics of the relationship of wala that is what you very clearly need to understand wala is a type of relationship and wali is the person which has the specifications that number 1 there is sincere sincere and deep heartfelt love and affection number 1 number 2 there is a mutual relationship of copying of idolizing and glamoring and copying each other then there is a mutual relationship of sharing matters and secrets and hence taking advice or counseling each other and the fifth is sharing entertainment when we are free in a pensive mood we have a holiday we have a free time then we share our entertainments so when two people relate with each other with this specific format then that relationship will be a relationship which is most intimate and this is the relationship of wala and the person and the two people will be a wali for each other now having understood all these four forms of human social relationships next i would want to explain and we would need to understand how are we as believers made support uh, supposed to go about all these three forms of human relationships now coming to the first three forms the first three forms of human social relationships that is simple interaction or interaction of hospitality or the dealings of care help and support it is not that a believer can it is not a matter that a believer can no but a believer should with all these three forms relate in a good conduct in a good manner in a polite behavior in a kind attitude and be merciful these three forms of dealings all the believers should with a good manner and conduct and behavior and kindness and politeness relate with all religion sects nations whether believers non believers muslims non muslims obedience transgressors all will be the muslims relating these three forms of dealings in an excellent conduct and behavior why the first reason being that muslims obviously need to need to learn need to gain knowledge need to need to learn skills muslims and muslim states need to do business business transactions trade with all the people around the world may they be muslims may they be non muslims may they be believers may they be idol worshipers we have to go ahead with teaching learning skills education conducting business trade because if we don't do these things the muslim ummah or the muslim states or the muslim businessmen or the traders or the muslim individuals or the muslim students they do not do all this then obviously they will lag behind they will lag behind in the race of progress development and the muslim individuals and societies and communities and countries and ummah will all remain underdeveloped with lack of progress and advancement in various fields of life so to progress so to ad- have advancement we need to relate with all peoples with all people whatever color caste creed religion in a very good conduct and manner and behavior in our simple interactions be hospitable to them be caring and helping to them may they be jews may be the uh, may they be idol worshipers we have to be kind to them polite to them courteous to them and excellent in our manners because we have to do all this thing with them and the other reason is that it is going to be the conduct of the muslims and the believers will be which will be a source of a silent invitation to the non believers towards islam it will be 
it will be the non-believers, the, the non-Muslims, the people of the book, the idol worshippers, when they will see the polite, the courteous, the caring manners and the conduct of the Muslims, then they, people of the other religions and other sects, they will be attracted towards Islam. So that is why we are supposed to, and it is mandatory to be in a excellent mannerism with all the people in these initial three forms of dealings and there are multiple events in the life of Prophet Sallallahu where he was seen behaving in these four dealings in this manner in his excellent manner but the last form of dealing but the last form of human dealings or the last form of human relationship which I have talked about as wala taking wali, the loving bond, the intimate bond, Quran gives a very clear-cut instruction to all believers regarding wala. Whom a Muslim will be permitted and whom a Muslim will be forbidden to have wala with. In Surah Al Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly has highlighted and announced that Muslims and believers will not be will not be allowed and they will not be permitted to have wala with the non-Muslims, with the non-believers. So this is a don't of Quran. Then here in this verse, and even in other verses of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done at the second level, has prohibited and forbidden for all believers and Muslims to stop having wala even with the people of the book, that is with the Jews and with the Christians. And this is at the individual level and at the state level. Then the third is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Toba has clear, has very really clearly in black and white asked all the Muslims to avoid the relationship of wala, of love and intimacy, even with Muslims who are hypocrites, even with hypocrites or people, as Allah says, who prefer to be disobedient to Allah than to, than to be obedient to Allah who prefer the state of disobedience to the state of obedience, then a believer will not take him as a wali. That person will not be taken as a wali, even if he is his brother, his father, his mother or his sister. Why not? Why will a believer not have wala or will not take as wali a hypocrite or a disobedient or a transgressor? Because the loving bond, the intimate bond, the closeness, the copying, the sharing, the following, the counseling, the taking of advice and the sharing of entertainment with a hypocrite or with a disobedient or with a transgressor will do what? If a believer, I repeat again, if a believer in a person of faith starts following, starts idolizing or glamour, glamorizing, starts counseling or taking advice from or sharing entertainment with a hypocrite or with a disbeliever or with a transgressor, where will that person lead, lead the wali to? Obviously, this will, this will ruin the faith, this will weaken the belief, this will damage and destroy the religion. Their advices, their counseling will just destroy the religion of the believer. That is why in clear-cut orders, a believer is supposed to avail of wala or take as wali only, only and only those who are people of strong faith and belief. Wala is permitted. Wala is permitted for the Muslims and for the believers only, only regarding whom, the, who's those who are believers. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 
in Surah Maida, verse 55 and 56. Innama waliyukumullahu wa rasooluhu wallazina amanu. Behold, only your wala or only your wali shall be whom shall be Allah, his messenger, and those who are those who are the believers. And who are the believers? Allazina yuqimu salata. Those who establish the salah, wa yuqtuna zakata, and they and they pay the zakah, wa humraki un, and they bow down before Allah. So these are the people a believer can take as wali, and these are the people whom we are permitted to do the relationship of wala with. Only the people who are establishing salah, who are paying the zakat, who are bow, bowing down and who are offering the congregational salah and the believers of Allah and people of strong faith are we permitted according to the teachings of Quran and Sunnah to take as wali or to do wala with. Only them can we confide in, only them can we trust in, only them can we take advice or we can have counseling with them, we can share secrets with them and we can copy them, we can idolize them and then we can share our entertainments with them. So this is the importance of human relationships. Talking about human relationships, I would also want to talk about the friendships, how important these friendships and dealings are. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Tirmidhi that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Al-maru ala dini khalilihi that a man is on the religion of his companions, of his friends. So everyone should think with whom he is forming friendship with. And this is an eye-opener for all of us. Whom are we taking as friends? Whom are we taking as wali? And whom our children and our family members are taking as wali and friends. Prophet Sallallahu said, it has been narrated by Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who in Muslim, that you will be resurrected with the person you loved in this world. So this is the importance of friendship, of wala. And Prophet Sallallahu has taught us a supplication to shelter against the bad company. Prophet Sallallahu used to say, as reported by Hazrat Uqba bin Amir, Rasulullah Taala Anhu, Allahumma inni a'uzu bika, Allahumma inni a'uzu bika min yawm al-suri, wa min layla al-suri, wa min saat al-suri, wa min swahib al-suri, wa min jar al-suri, wa fi dar al-muqama. O Allah, I seek your shelter against evil of the day, evil of the night, evil of the time evil of companionship and evil of the neighborhood. It's a beautiful supplication we all need to remember and to recite it. And how good or bad company is going to affect our ideas and our priorities and preferences and our likes and dislikes and acts. Hazrat Abu Musa Ashri who reports in Bukhari that Prophet said, the example of a good and a bad friend. The example of a good and a bad friend is like that of a scent dealer and a blower of a furnace. If you make friendship with a person who is dealing in perfumes or scents, he may give you what? Al misk. It is a sort, one of the best forms of perfumes. He may give you some misk or a scent or a perfume, or at least you may buy it for him. And if neither, if neither gives you nor you buy it, you will at least enjoy the fine fragrance while sitting with him. That is, in his company, you will be definitely availing of the beautiful fragrance. But if you sit with a blacksmith near his furnace, 
He will scatter sparks of his fire which will burn your clothes or at least the smoke of the fire will suffocate you. So this is why we need to be very, very careful about taking and making friends for ourselves and for our children as well. And whom is a Muslim expected to love and how are we expected to love? What are the preferences of love for a believer? Remember, the primary priority and the first order of love is for Allah. As Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 165, Those who believe, the believers are those who do what? They are intense. They are severe. That is the most beloved to the believers is whom? Is Allah. So that is the right of Allah that he has to be the most beloved to the believers. And the second preference or priority in the list of our beloved is whom? The messenger of Allah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our beloved prophet. Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim. The Prophet said, What? Qala Rasulullah, La yu'minu abadun hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi min ahlihi wa malihi wa nasi ajma'een. Advancement will not be a believer until he loves me more than his family, his wealth, and the people around him. So this is, these are the two priorities of our love. And as Allah says, of these preferences and priorities, Allah talks in Surah Tawbah, verse 24. Kul in kana aba'ukum wa abna'ukum wa ikhwanukum wa azwajukum wa ashiratukum wa amwalu neqtaraftumuha wa tijaratun takshawna kisadaha wa masakinu tarzawnaha ahabba ilaykum min Allahi wa rasulihi wa jihadin fi sabilihi fatarabbasu hatta ya'ti Allahu bi amrihi wallahu la yahdil kawmal fasikin Say, announce, tell that if your fathers and if your sons, your brothers, your spouses, your clan, your worldly goods which you have acquired and the commerce and the trade whereof you fear of decline and the dwellings which you take pleasure in, if all these things, these are the worldly attractive, hubbu shahadat, Allah labels them in Quran, if all these things are dearer to you, then Allah and his Prophet وسلم, and the struggle in the cause of Allah that is jihad, fi sabilillah, then wait, wait, your result is what? It is later on. Then wait until Allah makes manifest his will. And know that Allah does not guide. Allah does not guide people who are what? al fasikin who are the transgressors. So this is why the preferences and priorities of love, the first order of preference is Allah and then is the Prophet of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. And remember, all those who love Allah and his messenger the most, then Allah and his messenger, they love him. He becomes the beloved of Allah and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what happens? When a believer becomes the beloved of Allah, beautiful are the words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Bukhari that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that Allah said that Allah Almighty says that he who has enmity with my friends, I declare war against them, and of the worships to which. My slave wants to approach me. My favorite worships are those which are obligatory. By excessive, that is by the supererogatory prayers, my slave gets so close to me that I start loving him. So remember that when a person is 
performing obligatory worships, like the obligatory fasts and salah and zakat, then that person, because of these obligatory prayers, gains the love of Allah. His heart gets full with the love of Allah. But when the person or when the believer beyond the obligatory worships starts performing the supererogatory worships like the Salah, the Salatul Tahajjud, the Salah Ishraq, any of these supererogatory Salah or supererogatory fasts or charity in the path of Allah beyond Zakat, then this person becomes a beloved of Allah. And when a person becomes the beloved of Allah, what happens? See what Allah Almighty says, once I start loving a slave, then I become his very ears with which he hears only those things which I have permitted to hear. And then I become his very ears with which he sees all those things which he is permitted to see. I become his very hands with which he gets hold of only those things which I have allowed him to hold. And then I become his very feet with which he walks to where I have allowed him to walk. And when he begs anything from me, that is when he supplicates or when he makes prayer, when he begs anything from me, I do grant it to him. And when he seeks shelter, I do give him my shelter. So this is the excellence of the person who is performing supererogatory worships and then becoming a beloved of Allah. Allahumma ja'alla minhum. Then Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Muslim that Prophet sallallahu said that when Allah Almighty loves his slave, he calls Jibreel alayhi salam and tells him, I love such and such person, so you should love him also. So Jibrail also loves the person. And then he declares in the heaven, Allah loves such and such person. So all of you, whom the angels, all of you should love him. So all the angels of heaven start loving that person. And then grant of his action is placed on the earth. Subhanallah, 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 Allahumma ja'alna minhum, Allahumma inni as'aluka, hubbaka wa hubba man yuhibbuka, wa amala allazi yuballighuni hubbaka. And then the third in the level and the preference of priority of love for a believer and for Muslim is the Muslim brothers. For the concept of Muslim fraternity and Muslim brotherhood, the third in priority of love, in priority of intimacy is whom? The Muslims, the Muslim fellow beings. And this love for the Muslim fellow beings need, need with sincere intention to be for the love of Allah. The Muslims should love each other. The believers should love the believers purely with intention of love for the sake of Allah. And what the excellence of love for the sake of Allah in believers is? Hazrat Abu Umama Bahli radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Abu Dawood that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Qala man ahabba lillah wa abhaza lillah wa ahatwa lillah wa mana'a lillah faqad istakmal al-eeman. He who loves just to please Allah, he who loves just for the love of Allah and gets angry just to please Allah, he who gives, gives what? Arms, charity, gift, just to please Allah and restrains to give, just to please Allah. He accomplishes, he perfects or completes his faith. Allahumma ja'alla minhum. Hazrat Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports that Prophet sallallahu said, the most firm handhold of belief is the most firm 
hand hold of belief is friendship to please allah enmity to please allah love to please allah and anger to please allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with all these frame of minds how excellent how excellence love for the believers and love for the sake of allah is Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there is no doubt that Allah almighty will say on the day of judgment where are those who loved one another for my obedience and for my grandeur I shall bless them with the shade of my throne today and there is no shade save that of my throne and the words which you've heard very frequently in the previous sessions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in bukhari and muslim that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that seven lucky people who would be permitted to the shade of the throne of allah azza wa jal one of them would be two a pair who loves each other for the sake of allah meets for the sake of allah and separates for the sake of allah Hazrat Muaz bin Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Tirmizi that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said those who love another that Allah said that those who love another for my grandeur will be sitting where beautiful words the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that believers who love each other for the sake of Allah they will be they will be made to sit they will be destined for which place for raised platforms for high pillars for raised platforms which will be addition to on the right hand of the throne of Allah and on them will be seated people with bright with shining faces with glowing faces and envious of them will be whom the prophets the messengers the martyrs and the righteous people and it will be asked that who were they they will be the people who would who would love in this world for the sake of allah how beautiful is this love for the sake of allah hazrat mas bin jabal radiyallahu ta'ala who reports that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said almighty allah says it is incumbent on me to love those who associate each other just for my sake those who love each other for my sake who visit each other for my sake who spend on each other for my sake hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala who reports in muslim an occasion that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that a person was going to a village to visit his muslim brother and allah almighty appointed an angel on his way and when the person reached the angel the angel asked him where he was going and the visitor said that he was going to wait uh, visit such a such village where his uh, muslim brother was living and the angel asked him does he owe something to you that is are you going to get something for him the visitor said no i just love him for the sake of allah The angel said, "I am an angel appointed by Allah to tell you that Allah loves you as you love your brother for the sake of Allah." And then Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that in Jannah there will be balconies made of emerald. In Jannah there will be balconies made of emerald they are resting on columns of rubies their doors will be open the doors will be shining like bright stars the companion said o prophet of allah who will dwell in them and he said those who associated who are associated with others just for the sake of allah and those who love each other for the sake of allah and those who visited one another for the sake of allah allahumma ja'alna minhum o oh allah bless us with all these friendships and all these relationships and all these loves hazrat abu umama bakhli radiyallahu ta'ala who reports in musnad ahmad that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam promised 
that when a slave of Allah loves another slave of Allah, he is blessed with the honor of Allah. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbaka wa hubba man yuhibbuka wa amal allazi yuballighuni hubbaka. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ خديتنا وخب لنا من لدنك الرحمة إنك أنت الوهاب سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين ثم آمين